Hey guys, Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about tube bending and ring rolling. So some of the manufacturing processes that you might want to do in your shop, um, if you're you know, making projects like um, integrated rings or you're creating um, you know, a ringed type structure, um, you want to go with a ring roller. So a really simple little tool, um, basically the unit that uh, we've got in front of us here, um, has basically three, uh, three dies, um, a couple of different size uh, grooves for your different size rings, and then a tensioner. So you're basically just going to insert the rod, the straight rod, and then you're going to crank it, hand crank it, and create your rings. You can change the radius on the rings depending on the tensioning that you put on the tensioner knob. You just got to keep in mind um, when you have dies moving, Fingers can get stuck in inside. You want to prevent any kind of pinching. And again, you want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses and gloves if possible. So as you get into the larger tubing going from the rings, we've got manual tube benders as well as pneumatic or large um, hydraulic press tube benders. So this unit in front of us here um, is a, uh, a manual operated tube bender, really basic. Uh, basically, you have a nice big wheel for mechanical advantage rolling that tube through the center of the, uh, the unit here. Inside the center, you've got a series of dies. Um, you've got two fixed dies, and uh, you've got a die that's attached to this threaded post here. And as you twist and turn, you start to create more downward tension on your tubing that's running through as you run your, your uh, wheel, and you'll start to bend the radius into your tube. Now, this unit does come with a variety of other um, dies, so it's not just one size of tube that you're going to use in this. And to, to make that really simple to swap out, on the back side here, um, there's some cotter pins that you just pull out and uh, the dies come out really easy. Put in some new dies and away you go. We're going to show you how this all works. So right out of the box, you're going to want to set up your, uh, your tubing roller. Uh, just keep in mind as you uh, disassemble the, the box and then reassemble the components that need to be put together. Um, the, the tensioner threaded rod here is going to be nested all the way down. So uh, currently I have it just slightly higher so that we could get the tube in just to align um, for, for demonstration purposes. So you'll just need a wrench uh, which does not come with it and uh, counterclockwise, clockwise um, just to put downward tension or upward ten uh, tension on the die sets. So once you've got your size, these, this unit does come with three different die sets. Uh, currently the one that's in the model right now is a one inch die set. It also has a one and a half inch and a two inch die set, um, depending on that size of pipe that you're looking to roll. So we're just gonna kind of put some tension down on the unit and um, it's got a nice big wheel to create more leverage. And uh, you may have to do this a few times um, to get that bend radius. What you just want to be mindful of is that you don't over bend it. You'll start to kink the tube and then you'll have to start over again. So we're just going to put some tension down on the pipe and we'll just begin to roll. So you'll start to see that the, the tube will start to want to come upwards and that just means that we're putting more and more tension on the, the pipe and it'll start to create its bend. So as you can see, it's starting to kind of lift out and the bigger the bend radius, the more tension you would have to do to put down onto the, the tube with your tensioning uh, adjustment. Once you're ready to kind of take it out, just back it off slightly and you should be able to just roll out the tube and you can see here that you're going to start to create a bend. Now, if you need that larger bend, well, then you'd need to run it through again and again to finally get that bend radius required. So let's talk a little bit about the 13 ton pneumatic pipe bender. So this is actually kind of a two in one. We call it a pneumatic pipe bender because we use air. So we have an air cylinder, hook it up to our air up to 120 PSI and uh, we just hit a trigger and the, uh, the pipe bender will work. So we have that option, that's the easy option, but you also have the manual way. So 
You also have a handle where you can pump up and down and you can you know, bypass the pneumatics. You do have to be keep, uh, mindful of the reservoir. So you gotta make sure that there's oil within the reservoir and that's in the back side here. There's a breather cap that you just fill your oil with. Uh, regular um, 30 weight hydraulic oil will work. And there's also a shut off valve. Um, the valve at the back here must be closed all the way off for this system to work open it up to retract the piston inside the metal bender. You basically have the front part here, so it opens up so you can get really into it. Um, the unit comes with a variety of um, die sizes, so your tubes, um, in this case, this one's a one inch, um, you can get all the way up to two inch. And, uh, in, and in between. So depending on the size of tube that you're uh, trying to bend, um, you get different dies, not one, not one is all fitting. And they basically just lock on to the, uh, the end of the piston. You also have your die guides, and the die guides basically have three sides to them. Um, you, you've got different notches, depending on the material that you're actually trying to bend. They also have different hole spacings depending on the radius of bends that you want to create. So if you're trying to get a nice soft bend, and there's guides in the, um, the manual that you can look at that helps you through where you would need to put each die in relation to the type of radius that you want. And it also has a guide on top for your different angles um, as a picture on there. Um, this one here is fairly lightweight, so you know it's not a portable unit, but it is easy to move around the shop. Um, you do have hydraulic oil in it, so we do have to be very careful of leaks. Um, if you do have a seal leak or something and that oil's coming out, uh, you do want to fix that right away. Otherwise, you know, you can get an oil injection injury or you know, oil in the face and then obviously all over the floor. That's a bad thing. You do have to care be careful of your hose on your, um, on, on your pneumatic line. Um, this gets dragged around the, the shop and uh, it can wear out or gets pinched in between some steel. So just make sure that you don't have any leaks in your hose. Again, always wear, wearing eye, eyewear and safety gloves. Um, you know, that's just a standard when you're working with any kind of metal. For storage, you can just back it in a corner. Um, I've seen some guys actually you know, this might not be the right height for you. It's simply, you know, making some new legs, just inserting some put casters, put them on a, a portable, you know, dolly around the, the shop just to get it where you're going. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.